Well, you always know you have disruptive technology when you put it out there and people misuse it. I, I remember a decade ago doing like a story on like pimps recruiting women on Facebook, mm. right? Which was like, okay, you know, if someone's using your technology in a bad way, like you have something that's hitting mainstream. So like, can you tell us like what, how are people using it in ways that it's not designed for? Have you, what have you learned from putting this out there? And what have you learned from how people are misusing it? Yep. Um, well, misuse is definitely also very core to, to what we think about. Um, part of why we wanted to put this out there was to get feedback, to see how people use it for good and for bad, and to continually tune. Um, and honestly, one of the biggest things that we've seen, you know, we always anticipate all the different things that might go wrong. For GPT-3, we really focused on misinformation, and the, actually the most common people, the most common abuse vector was generating spam for drugs, you know, for right. uh, you know, var various medicines. And so uh, you don't necessarily see the problems around the corner. For ChatGPT, one thing we've just seen is people just creating thousands or hundreds of thousands of accounts hmm. uh, in order to just be able to use it much more. Um, some people generating lots of spam. Um, it's clear that, that uh, people are using it for all sorts of different things. Um, I think for individuals, uh, there's definitely, uh, I think actually, I would say this is an interesting category of, you know, to your point where it says something that is confidently wrong. My um, drunk frat guy point. Exactly, yeah, yeah that yeah. over-reliance, right? right? And thinking, oh, because it said that, it must be true. Yeah. And that's not true for humans. Uh, right. It's not quite true for AIs. Yeah. Um, I think we will get there at one point, but uh, I think that it's going to be a process and something we all need to participate in. Right.